Uh, let's talk to our correspondent in London, Benedict Pavio, um, about this story. Benedict, uh, first of all, uh, you know, they're a supporter of the uh, ambassador saying there's been a coup in Myanmar. Now, apparently, in their language, a similar situation in London. What is your understanding um, of the situation this hour? Well, we've been uh, tracking this story since uh, last night. And apart from uh, being extremely aware that the ambassador spent the night uh, in meters from the embassy, in his own embassy, uh, he, of course, has had this statement read out. Now, he is clearly placing his hope in uh, the support that he wants from the Foreign Office. Uh, and interestingly, if I just read out a brief tweet by the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, uh, clearly the UK is condemning uh, this uh, bullying, what the UK calls bullying. So Dominic Raab says, we condemn the bullying actions of the Myanmar military regime in London yesterday, and I pay tribute to the ambassador, Kyo Zhuo Min, for his courage. The UK continues to call for an end to the coup and the appalling violence and a swift restoration of democracy. What we know is that the police presence has been growing outside the embassy, an embassy uh, situated in the heart of uh, an area called Mayfair. And what we also know is that we expect uh, quite a lot of demonstrators to turn up later on today. So there is effectively a standoff where you have uh, the ambassador who learnt, he says, from the Chargé d'Affaires, who has, it would seem, replaced him, locked him out of the embassy. And, of course, this huge hope, uh, both of supporters of the uh, ambassador, uh, or should we say now former ambassador, according to the military junta, um, and what the Foreign Office uh, will take in the way of action. So there is definitely a, a standoff, and it is not clear how this will be resolved and what the timeline is on this at all. And what is very moving is to see the floral tributes on the railings outside the embassy to the 500 plus people who have lost their lives being killed in the protests in Myanmar. Yeah, this is clearly, as you say, a, a moving story, uh, Benedict. Do we have more details at the moment as to why it was the ambassador was dismissed from his position? Well, we believe uh, this, and it would seem to go back to the 9th of March, when the ambassador uh, actually called for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi, the detained uh, civilian leader who won, uh, for intents and purposes, the last election, an election that the military junta uh, is basically cancelling and accusing of being uh, fraudulent. Uh, and you know, since the coup of the 1st of February, obviously there has been a real standoff. But it seems to date back to that 9th of March uh, declaration from the ambassador uh, that he then angered uh, Myanmar um, and that there was a call, it would seem, reported here in the British press on state television in uh, Myanmar for uh, the calling back of the ambassador um, and his replacement. And then suddenly these events yesterday, which are very serious and clearly a real headache uh, for and a diplomatic real standoff for the British authorities, definitely being talked about in Downing Street. Uh, so we await to see what other public statement we get. All right.